content first we will have a glimpse of what was pre processing which we discussed in our last class so we mentioned that uh, a noisy data a real world data which is dirty which has incompatible noisy and inconsistent so conversion problems are there error problems are there and data will be incomplete all that it is going to affect the quality of data so there was a proposed approach that we need to go for a three dimensional way which it is going to occupy for accuracy completeness consistency timeliness and accessibility so as a part of it we look with data processing primitives one we call it as data cleaning two we call it as data transformation three we are going to call it as integration fourth one we call it as data reduction and fifth one we are going to call it as a data discretization so removal of outliers filling the missing values etc all this will come under the arena of data cleaning then we get data from flat files and different databases we need to put together we call it as integration three we need to put uh, a unified code format between multiple variables so we go with the aggregation and normalization etc that is what we call it as data transformation so while doing some analysis some part of data is needed some part of data is un not needed so whatever relevant to our query only that part we take it we call it as data reduction then we break the things into different segments and group them and then start our justifications we call that word as a data discretization so this was the holistic architecture where we are going to call this uh, diagram as a raw data from the raw data we will be creating the clean data so we have multiple sources here all together put at the same way then we are going to have a uh, transformation so we have 22 100 etc they are put to a same scale between uh, 0 to 1 minimum value and maximum value and then we have uh, 13000 and 120 values so we have 400 plus and 15 attributes so this is what we reduce the size so we have reduced the size so that is where we call that word as transformation then in the yesterday's or earlier class we have talked about data cleaning so in this data cleaning we attempted that data cleaning will happen and how we are going to resolve it means we need to fill the blanks in between and we need to identify the outliers and we need to smooth the data and whatever data is inconsistent error that has to be updated so when we do some analysis such type of data cleaning mechanism will be encoded so i have a number series 2 4 6 dash and 10 so obviously we compute the pattern obviously we complete the pattern so plus 2 adding is a pattern and this is the missing value and thereby you are going to fill this with 8 because you found a pattern so that is how you are going to fill up the missing values etc so missing values uh many tuples they don't have a uh, recorded data and eventually data is there but we are unable to give the data so that is where the error prone is going to happen and uh, why this uh, missing da data is happen because it is an equipment malfunctioning so the operator doesn't have the equipment at that time and obviously um, he is unable to provide the data it goes with a missing va value similarly there are some inconsistencies when we integrate the two or more databases so maybe one row has one conversion function another record may have another conversion function there will be a type mismatch and that it is going to deal to an 
uh, inconsistent values. So these are some of where the uh, it is misleading. So how you are going to uh, manage the missing values? So this was the first uh, question at this point of time. So how we are going to manage the things means one we are going to call it as a, ignore the tuple. So in set of 10 records, assume that I am going to have two records as an error records where data is not there and due to those two remaining eight are going to suffer. So obviously we are going to ignore those contents. So that is what the first solution they have uh, taken that is called as ignoring the data. So when we are going to eliminate that record from the uh, uh, analysis, so from the remaining items we go with uh, uh, doing the analytical part. So this is one thing. So but, uh, but the thing was, uh, if there is error data, removing the missing data will not always be a fruitful item, but we have a chances we will get to analysis, but the best practice was we need to have some strategy to fill up the missing values so that we can fill with some value which is a near approximation, etc. So that is where one of a solution. And second thing was, if a class label is not going to be known, you go with a uh, global constant. We go with a global constant. For example, if I'm going to say height is 100 centimeters, 1000, uh, height is 100 centimeters, 120 centimeters, height is 130 centimeters and 140 centimeters. So in this way, I'm going to have and assume that there is a missing value. There is a missing value. So what I can do is I will do some average and doing this average fill the missing value or we can go with some global constant. So how this global constant is going to vary means it is the uh, average value what we are going to get. So uh, if we are going to say the average value is 5 here, so 150. Now 150 is going to be the global constant. So if there are some missing values, instead of putting them as an empty, you go with filling with a global constant. So that is how one the va value is going to take place. The other thing was, as just mentioned, you fill this with a glo uh, global constant and this is related for the numeric values it is numeric values but if it is for a character value if it is for a character value then or if it is going to be a string value then what is the primitive is you go with some class name uh, with a label that is common to all the fields so again, we are going to call this item as a global constant. So uh, if the, I can say grade is A, B, C, D, and if it is less than 60%, it is fail. So if it is not uh, A, B, C, D, obviously it is less than 60, you put it as a fail grade. So I have a if statement, if else statement, and then we will be having a default statement that if it is true, we will go with condition 1. If else is done, we will go with condition 2. Other than meeting condition 1 and condition 2, everything we will put it in a third loop. So that is a default option. So in this way, uh, when we take with the missing values, we will work with uh, a manual state, filling it. Second thing, we will replace with unknown values with some new label. Third thing, what we can do is, we will predict the uh, mean value of that series and that mean value is going to be part of that missing value. So these are some of the ways where missing values are taken up. But still there are some strategies where missing values can be implemented. So we will be using the machine learning and statistical functions in order to fill the missing values. So how we are going to do is, we will be using a Bayesian formula. There we are going to compute the 
probability that is uh, how much uh, uh, percentage or chances to put the class label. So how much chances is there, how much percentage is there so that we can put the class label. So that is how we will do with a Bayesian uh, classifiers, etc. Now, why does a noisy data occur means? So noisy data, it is going to be some change in variance or we are going to call there is some chance of random error. So what will happen was uh, where it is going to do is so false data collection or data entity problems, technology limitations and inconsistency and naming control. So these are some of the areas where uh, the noise or a random error is going to happen. So how you are going to do uh, is we'll discuss and there are some other problems where data cleaning is going to record uh, means that we are going to call it as a duplicate records or a incompleting of a data. Fine. Now what will be the different strategies of uh, handling the noisy data? So in order to handle the noisy data, there are some techniques. One we are going to call as a equi width, another we are going to call it as an equi depth. So we will uh, use means, we will use median, we will use bin boundaries. So these are the three techniques where uh, one of the way or a best way to handle the noisy data. So one we will be calling it as bin means, two we are going to call it as bin median and third thing we will call it as bin boundaries. So how are these techniques implemented, etc. So that we will now uh, discuss. So we were talking uh, noisy data is going to occur. So noisy data may occur with duplicate records, inconsistency data, random error or variance. So these are the different ways where noisy data is going to come. So if such is a the case, then how can I handle the noise data? So there are technique one, we call it as winning. Technique two, we call it as regression. And uh, regression and then technique three we are going to call it as uh, the three approaches which are going to be part of uh, uh, the binning method. That is clustering. Fourth one it is going to be combined computer and human in inspection. So these are the four methods where uh, data handling uh, for the noise is going to happen. I repeat the four strategies, one binning, two smoothing, three clustering and fourth combined and human inspection. Let us talk or discuss uh, for each of these uh, things in detail.
So we were talking about the binning method first. So in binning method, we were telling that there will be some equidepth, etc. And in this equidepth method, uh, it takes bin mean, bin median, and bin boundaries. Based on these three, binning will happen, etc. So let us talk about the binning method first. I think somebody should uh, mute your mic. Fine. Now, binning method, it is C at this point of time, sorting the data for, uh, for price in dollars. Now you have the values 4, 8, 9, 15, 21, 21, 24, 25, 26, 28, 29, and 34. So this is what the uh, series are. So now we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So we have 12 elements in the vector. Now let us talk about the binning method one and this technique we are going to call it as equidepth. In this equidepth what we are going to do is we will divide that stack, we will divide that vector into the equal number based on the elements. So now the total number of elements is equals to total number of elements is equals to 14 and now number of bins is equals to 3. Therefore, I will get a simple technique. So put 4 per each bin. So we can do a separation based on the number of elements and number of uh, bins. So it is not at all a big issue. So first bin, it is 4, 8, 9, 15. Second, it is 21, 21, 24, 25. That is second bin. And third bin, it takes up 26, 28, 29, and 34. So in this way, we will get the equal depth for the partition. Fine. The first technique is done. Now, let us look at the second technique. Now, let us look at the second technique. So when we are talking about the second technique, that is what we call it as bin means here. So we will take 4, 8, 9, and 15. This goes with bin 1. So now I will compute 4 plus 8 plus 9 plus 15 divided by 4 equals to 9. So this is what we are going to call it as mean. So what we are going to do is we are going to put entire size. We are going to replace entire size of bin with the mean value. With the mean value. Therefore, what it is going to happen is instead of 4, 8, 9, 15, we are not going to write this. We will write 9, 9, 9, 9. So this is what the second technique and in this second technique, we are going to use the smoothing, what we call here as a bin means. Smoothing, we are going to call here as a bin means. So the first technique, we discussed about the equidepth and second technique, we call it as bin means. So I'm going to have 21, 21, 24 and 25. So First, I will take the bin mean 21 plus 21 plus 24 plus 25 by 4. We will be getting the average value as 23 and bin size is equals to 4. Therefore, replace all the elements from start to end, from start to end with bin mean. So this is the second value. So earlier we got it as 9999. Now we'll be getting 23, 23, 23, 23. Similarly, we have 26, 28, 29, and 34. Now we say 26 plus 28 plus 29 plus 34 divided by 4 
we will be getting this one value as 29. So that is the reason why we call it as 29, 29, 29, 29. So this is the second technique. First technique, we have equal partitions. So we have total elements as 12 elements. We have total elements as 12 elements. So that 12 elements, we have three bins here, one, two, and three, we replace it. So that is what we call it as bin mean. Then comes the third technique. So in the third technique, we are going to work on the bin boundaries. In the third technique, we are going to work on the bin boundaries. So when we are going to call it as bin boundary, first of all, we have 4, 8, 9, 15. So 4, we are going to call it as minimum value. 15, we are going to call it as maximum value. 4, we are going to call it as minimum value. And 15, we are going to call it as a maximum value. So what we are going to do is, first element we will be keeping and we have one, two, three, and four. So this is positions. So four, eight, nine, 15 must be there. Now what we are going to replace was, we are going to replace it with bin boundary. So it can be with the minimum boundary, minimum bin boundary, and it can be replaced with the maximum bin boundary. So you are going to replace with uh, uh, 4 followed by another value 4 and maximum value you are replacing with 15 here and 15 here. Similarly, we are taking up this 26, 26, 30, uh, 34 here. So the what was the earlier values are 26, 28, 29 and 34. Now 26 is going to be the minimum range. 20, 34 is going to be the minimum range. So you can see here 26, 26, 26, and 34. Okay, how did you do it and what are the strategies? Are there any algorithms, etc.? Yeah, the very first algorithm, what we are going to call it as uh, equi-width algorithm. So in this equi-width algorithm, the first technique we are going to call it as distance partitioning. In this distance partitioning, it is going to divide the range into n equal sizes. We are going to call that one as uniform grid. And we assign A with the lower and B with the high values. Then we will identify with W is equals to the total width of the interval size. We are going to call it as B minus A. If any outliers are there, we are uh, removing it. Any skewed data is going to happen. So when we are going to put the uh, normal distribution when we are going to write this as a normal distribution so this is normal distribution and if we are going to write in this model right <coughs> so we have negative skew and similarly if the partitioning is very much low here we are going to call it as positive skew. So if the there is positive skew, if it is negative skew, so this is the normal distribution and this is what the correct value is. So it is error in the left hand side, the, in, the, in the right hand side, this is error in the left hand side. Then what we call it as a skew data. So this skew data is going to be happened. Then again, equidish is going to Say. So that is why we made this proportionate with uh, the bin means. The next thing what we are going to call it as equidepth policy. In this equidepth policy, it is going to divide the range into n intervals and each of them containing the same number of samples. So this is what we call it as data sampling and we have uh, taken up with the same values here. So 9, 9, 9, 9, 23, 23, 23, 23. So this is what the first technique of handling the noisy data. Then comes the second technique we are going to call here as clustering. So clustering, it is going to aim to remove outliers. It is going to remove the outliers at this stage. 
so for example if we are going to have the clustering techniques so uh, uh, i am going to say it is csc a and this is csc b and csc c so obviously if i am going to have some 16 b0 series it is going to have some 17 b0 series maybe if it is going to have 21 b0 series so or if it is having 20 b0 series and you all put at a 19 b0 series now these items doesn't comply doesn't comply with the normal behavior so 19b0 1a05 this is uh, 16 series 17 series 20 series and 21 series but cluster a cluster b cluster c they belong to 19b0 series so definitely these three students are not fitting into these three clusters and now these three people we are going to call it as an outliers because whatever the number series having between a b c c a c that is not matching that is not matching with the remaining three so that is where we are going to see such items when we visualize it we see that these items are having abnormal behavior and having such type of abnormal behavior the items are identified and removed before they are going to have for analysis so we talked about the two items one we call it as binning method second one we talked about the clustering method and third thing what we are going to call it as combined computer and human inspection so when there is some certain type of an error now we need to pass the work at that point of time apply the human knowledge and instantial knowledge and then we can go with both a combination of human inspection so human will verify manually the marks human will verify the uh, marks on the script and the marks in the excel sheet they both compare whether they are not correct or not when we are posting the marks etc so their combined human and human inspection are going to happen so that is the first level because whatever marks are there on your answer script the same marks has to be in the excel sheet therefore it will come to the svcw ecoms them in so if to that stage it has to come first of all there should be a comparison between the manual marks and the automated marks whether they are true or not so if there is a mismatch again your percentage this may drop etc and that will be where a noisy data is going to come so the, the combined human uh, inspection again along with the uh, system both are put together so that is one of an approach and the fourth approach what we are going to call here was a regression approach so when we are going to talk about uh, uh, regression now we do have two types of uh, regressions one we call it as a linear regression and two we are going to call it as a uh, logistic regression one we are going to call it as a linear regression and another we are going to call it as a logistic regression so in linear regression we will work with the numeric data so that it is going to be an integer it is going to be a float etc in logistic regression we will work with the character data so that is what we say it is character strings or we are going to work on class labels so will it rain today so yes or no yes is a class label no is a class label so for this approach we will use a logistic regression then I am going to say a person having uh, uh, subject 1, he is going to have marks of 80. Subject 2, he is going to have a marks of 85. Subject 3, he is going to have a marks of 90. And subject 4, he is going to have a marks of 95. Then a uh, question is, subject 5 how much 
percentage of marks he may get. So if such is a question is going to ask, then I'm going to say answer is equals to 90. So here at this case, it is falling on numeric data. At that time, we will use linear regression. So when we are working on a linear data, or when we are working on a numeric data, we will check to do it on an integer values or on a float values. But when we are talking about a logistic regression, then we will work on character data, string data, or class labels, etc. So in this way, we will identify it. Okay, fine. We got an abstract view, but how do we relate it, etc. means then at that point of time, we will go with the regression that is correlation of two independent variables. So we will have only two variables, then we will call here as a linear regression. But when we are going to do correlation of multiple variables, then at that time, two or more variables, then we are going to have here as a multiple regression. So these are the two items what we are going to take. So X and Y I can take, it is linear regression. X, Y, Z, etc. So I'm going to have multiple variables at that time, I will have multiple regression. So when we do regressions with linear regression or a logistic regression, at that case, what is the predominance here was, what is the predominance here was, we have correlation between the two attributes. We need to have correlation between two attributes. Assume that I have, I have a register number, then I'm going to have height, then I'm going to have weight, then I need to find body mass index. So if I want to compute a body mass index, it is associated with the height and weight. It is going to be associated with height and weight. So a strong correlation, you need to have a strong relationship between two variables. So this is first concept. Second concept, I have SGPA11, SGPA12, SGPA21, SGPA22. Now I'm going to compute my CGPA. Now I'm going to compute my CGPA. Similarly, some SGPA of 31. Now if I want to compute the CGPA, I should get all the SGPAs of all the semesters. I should get SGPAs of all the semesters. Now I need to have multiple correlated values. I need to have multiple correlated values. I need to get an association among all the SGPAs. Then only I can go to bring the CGPA. So if we are going to work with the two attributes, X axis and Y axis at that time, we say it is a linear regression and the relationship between the two elements will be very strong. How we are going to make a very strong means we are going to compute the correlation and we will see that how good A and B are correlated with one another. What is the relationship between one another to make the item? 
So body mass index formula is equals to height into weight. So definitely until unless I get height and weight, I cannot tell the body mass, how much is the body mass value, how much is the fat inside that. So you can't compute it. So the essential elements to compute the body mass index is height and weight. So these two values are going to be definitely needed. Therefore, the correlation between height and weight is high. Similarly, if I want to get my CGPA marks of the present mark list, so definitely this value is dependent on all my five semester marks. So the five semester marks CGPA I should get means definitely I have to get multiple attributes that is SGPA 1, 2, 3, 4. So at this case, we are going to say the regression it is considering not to two values, it is going to consider more than two. So we call such element as a basis for the multiple regression. So we were talking about the, um, the way what we call here as a uh, handling the noisy data. The first technique we call it as binning method. The second technique removing the outliers. Third technique we combine both the human and the computer interventions. And fourth thing we are going to use the regression functions. So we will draw a line, we will find the um, uh, soap and interception. So both of them they are going to have that elements, then only we are going to get the smoothing. So slope followed by interception, both we are going to compute at this relation and whatever items we are going to see that they should be having a very, very minor error between the first item and the second item. So that is what we call here as a regression elements. So, so we talked about the noisy data and we talked about the four methods of handling the noisy data. We call it as binning, two we call it as regression, three we call it as classification and fourth one we call as a combined human intervention. So when we are going to see that with a uh, linear regression function, we are going to estimate the slope and we are going to estimate the interception. So we get a linear regression model to draw a straight line. So I'm going to have at this model of time. So I can say students attending at 9 a.m. So all this they are going to be at the point. Now, students attending the class at night, 9 a.m. So they are on the line itself. Similarly, some students join at 9.5. Some students join at 9.10. Some students join at 8.55. Some students join at 8.50. Now, this value we are going to call it as 9 a.m. This line what we are going to draw at this point, we are going to call it as 9 a.m. Now we need to get the errors. Now we need to get the residuals. So how we are going to get the errors and how we are going to get the residuals means. So I asked her to come at 9 o'clock, but she came at 8.55. So error is minus 5 minutes. I asked her to come at 9 o'clock. She came at 9 o'clock. Now, error is equals to 0. I asked her to come at 9 o'clock. She came at 9.10. So, at this time, the error is, this is plus 5, the error is minus 10 minutes. So, in this way, we are going to identify the difference between 
the items and minimum items are identified and a slope is going to be drawn at that case we are going to call it as linear regression so in order to find this errors in order to find this residuals we are going to use this two functions slope and intersection interception so these two are going to be the two primitives where the linear regression function is going to use for the identification of noise and thereby in order to smooth the data with the regression functions now we talked about this uh, data cleaning process in this data cleaning process we were telling we have extraction transformation and loading for a multiple sources we taken the data put it into a unified approach and brought it to the data warehouse so etl process has been taken up and next thing let us look at the new word called as data integration let us look with a new topic called as data integration so as far as data integration is going to be concerned it is taking data from multiple sources it is going to bring data from multiple sources so i can write a, a relational database i am going to call it as an rdb ms this is an sql then i am going to have a flat file so this is comma separated value then i am going to have some cloud so i get these three elements put it in a data where house so this is 1 2 3 so 1 plus 2 plus 3 now you say it is data integration so here the language is english another example the language is telugu the language is hindi and the language is chinese so obviously for all the people common language is brought together so we say it is english at this phase we are going to extract the data we are going to extract the data and then we are going to transform the data so at this time when we are transforming the data we are going to use uh, converters so converters people who talk english doesn't understand hind and similarly from hindi to english so you need translators in the same way i was just mentioning e t l extraction transformation and loading so multiple databases are there and they are having their own way of approach so they need to be transformed so for that transformation we are going to use a unified approach called here as a data warehouse and all those three things are going to be loaded and data is going to be derived fine now what was the challenge when we are going to bring the data integration part the next question was what was the challenge when we are going to bring the data integration part so at that time as data is brought from multiple sources duplicate records may happen duplicate records may happen and if duplicates records are going to happen then the normalization the normalization the normal forms first normal form second normal form and third normal form will not fit will not do in a structured way so obviously there will be some error at that case so that has to be identified we are going to call that as an object identification so when object identification has to be taken place we need to have a conversion we need to have a conversion mechanism so how is this conversion uh, mechanism happening so i will just give an example here so temperature 
So I'm going to have temperature here. So in one people's way, in the Western people's way, so Western countries, temperature is measured in Fahrenheit. In Indian country, temperature, it is going to be measured in Celsius. So temperature has a scale, temperature has a scale where it can work with a Fahrenheit scale or it can work with a Celsius scale. So in one database, answer is in Fahrenheit. In another database, answer is in Celsius. Both are telling, both are telling temperature only. Both are representing, both are representing temperature. But still, we have a conversion problem. So obviously, what we have to do is, we need to have a formula. And applying this formula, we are going to call here as a transformation. Applying a formula here, at this case, while storing it into a database, we will use a formula. So we will use a formula converting from the constant value and thereby we are going to put it either in a Celsius or either in a Fahrenheit and bring to a unified way. So because different uh, attributes will have the same name, but they have the way, own way of formatting the things. So at that case, it may be different. So that is the reason why we are going to use the first technique called as an object identification. In object identification, what number system they have used, how they are going to store the data, whether the same format is used across all the databases or not, all are brought together, observed, and they are put to a single format. So that is where one of a technique, the redundancy or a duplicate data is going to be derived. Similarly, one attribute may be derived attribute in another table. One attribute may be a derived attribute in another table. So next comes the word here as the annual revenue. The next word what we are going to put here was an annual revenue. So when we call here as an annual revenue, so annual revenue, it is a summation from Jan month to a December month salary. So this is what we call it as an annual revenue. So what I can say is annual say, uh, uh, revenue is some 6 lakhs per annum. 6 lakhs per annum is going to be an annual revenue. But if I am going to use a technique called as a drill down, if I am using a technique called as a drill down, I will put Jan man's salary is some 50,000, Feb month salary is some 50,000, March month salary is 50,000. So 6 lakhs per annum, I'm going to get a consolidated value. And this is what we call it as a drill up, or we will call it as roll up and drill down. We are going to call it as roll down. So my, uh, the month's salary, January, February, March up to December values, all of them are used to bring a common value. So that is what we call it as a dependency is going to happen. So that is what we are going to say a derived attribute is going to be there and that it is going to not depend on a single table it is brought from multiple tables and all those multiple tables has to be taken up so this is where one of a careful integration has to happen because it may lead to some or it may lead to some redundancies so this is the first technique next next one was Next one was, as part of integration, as part of an integration, the very first thing was, we have a correlation analysis. We have a correlation analysis. In this correlation analysis, we will work on a word called as a nominal data. 
So in order to make an integration between multiple values and to check whether there is an association among these values, you need to understand. At that case, we have to go with a word called as a correlation analysis. So in correlation analysis, we will use a technique called as chi-square method. In correlation method, we are going to use a method called as an chi-square method. So in probability and statistics, you may have learnt it. Now the same formula we are going to put and we will take a database. We will take a database and we are going to have weight as a column and we are going to have height as a column. So we have these fields here, height and weight. Now how a height and weight are related to each other, whether they are strong, whether there is a low relationship between body height and body weight, you need to identify. Therefore, at that point, we are going to use a chi-square method. So if it is towards one, if it is greater than one, that is a larger value is going to happen, then the relationship is going to be very strong. If the there is a huge amount of large value is going to occur after a chi-square method has been applied, then definitely there is a strong relationship between the multiple items and these two items, they are going to be correlated. Similarly, a vice versa of the same line, if there are no such, uh, the low values are going to happen when we are going to do a chi-square method, then we say there is no good relationship among them. So how can I say these two items are correlated? How can I say that these two items are not correlated? At that case, we are going to say a formula that is observed minus expected whole square divided by the accepted. So observed minus expected divided by accepted. And for all this, we are going to make a summation and this summation we go with the square root and then we are going to compose the value for chi-square method. So uh, in the next class, we will look with a chi-square method example, etc. So a quick recap of what we have done for today. We have started up with the values for data cleaning and data cleaning. We mentioned that it is due to incomplete noise, inconsistency, etc. And the solutions was we can fill the missing values, we can uh, do the um, mean value and we can put a nearest uh, a global constant with it. So these are some of the solutions what we have proposed. Similarly, we can delete the tuple from the data set that is also one of a solution. And if there is some variance or noisy data in that, so how we are going to work with the noisy data means there are techniques what we suggested that is binning method, regression method, clustering method, outlier method and a combined way with a human and computer. So these are the five techniques what we have observed for today. So this is all for today. So we can end the class at this point of time.